Hello, today we're talking about resonance, a potentially tricky subject if you don't approach it really carefully, because things that people think resonate don't. We need to be really careful about our definitions, and we want to talk about it in the context of music. We're making music here. So what does resonance mean to us as musicians? Well, firstly, let's set about a definition. And before we get to the definition of resonance, we have to go through another definition. Uh, something called forced vibration because this is where the confusion arises it's easy to think that something that's vibrating is resonating they're different forced vibration is the act of making something vibrate it's literally that simple let's take the concept of the child's swing when I pull the child's swing back and push it I'm making that system, the swing, let's call the, the swing the system, that's the vibrating system. I'm making that swing vibrate. I'm pushing it, I'm forcing it on its path. Once I set it in motion, if the child on the swing remains completely rigid and doesn't attempt to interact with the swing in any way, it'll slow down and eventually come to a stop. Each time the swing comes back to me, if you've ever pushed a swing before, you know that your timing has to be pretty much perfect. As the swing reaches the very limit of its travel, you just give a gentle nudge on the back of the seat and the swing carries on. If you carry on doing that ad nauseum, the swing won't stop. The amount of energy that you have to push that swing with is tiny. You're resonating with the swing. This is where resonance comes in. What we've got is two systems, the swing, and my energy interacting with each other sympathetically in other words they're operating at the same frequency the frequency at which I apply the one fingers worth of push to the swing is exactly the same frequency as the swing itself if the swing is swinging backwards and forwards every three seconds then I'm pushing every three seconds it's no coincidence that those two numbers are identical that's what resonance is so resonance talks about two separate entities interacting with each other at the same frequency and when they do the energy of that system is combined both of those energies combine together at maximal efficiency and the it's easier to push the swing at that frequency the once every three seconds than any other frequency if I try to push the swing as it's part way on its way back, the child's going to come to a juddering stop and the whole system will fail. If I'm slightly out and the child is kind of the, the motion's nearly finished but not quite when I push, then I'll feel the the swing resist me and it will lose some velocity. And if I don't put that energy back into the system, then I'm going to cause the swing to actually slow down, not speed up. My timing has to be perfect. With that in mind, let's have a look at the technical definition of resonance. So it's a vibration of large amplitude. This is the swing in a mechanical, in this case, or electrical system, caused by a relatively small periodic stimulus. I'm the relatively small periodic stimulus. I can do it with my little finger. The amount of energy that you need in order to keep a swing going is absolutely minute of the same or nearly the same period. So this is my frequency, my pushing of the swing, perfectly matches the natural action of the pendulum of the natural vibration period of the system, which is the, the swinging of the swing. So you can treat uh, resonance as harmonic oscillation. Two oscillating systems acting in perfect or near perfect harmony. Okay, so that's a real world example and it gets us into the concept of resonance, but it's no good to us as musicians. We don't sit on swings when we're writing music, but we do pluck guitar strings and many of the same principles can be found in the guitar. What happens when I pluck a string on the guitar? The string vibrates. The string is attached to the guitar at two points, at the bridge and the nut. Those connection points transfer the energy from the string into the guitar. So the guitar is now vibrating at the same frequency as the strings. Now let's talk about just acoustic guitars here because they're a, a better example of the concept of resonance. 
the top of an acoustic guitar has a very particular uh, set of requirements for its construction. It's between two and three millimeters in thickness, typically. It's made of a soft, pliable wood, and its surface area is made, generally speaking, as big as possible. Because what's happening is the vibration of the strings is being passed into the top of the guitar. The, the top of the guitar is the most important part of the guitar from the perspective of making sound. Because the entire top of the guitar vibrates at the same frequency as the string. The string on its own is rubbish at making sound. It's got almost no surface area. So it's got almost no means of interacting with the environment. It can't push much air because it's so thin. But it's got a lot of energy. When you transfer that energy to something that's more efficient at turning energy into sound, let's say a large piece of springy vibrating wood, now that wood has a very large surface area. That entire surface area is interacting with the air around it, both above and below. The energy is actually transferred into the entire guitar, the neck and the sides and the back but predominantly it's the top that's doing the heavy lifting. Now that entire top of the body, the guitar body, is vibrating at the same frequency as the plucked string and all of those air molecules that are in contact with the, uh, the top of the guitar, they're now vibrating and we hear that manifested as a much louder sound. The guitar is amplifying the volume of the sound but it's not an amplifier intrinsically. There's no magical extra source of energy. All of the energy comes from the string. It's just that the guitar is a better delivery mechanism for it than if the string was suspended in midair between two fixed points. Nothing that I've just described there has anything to do with resonance. That's forced vibration. The string is forcing the guitar body to vibrate. The guitar body is sending from, from the top from the top perspective, it's throwing um, air molecules out and making sound. Behind the scenes, in the body of the guitar, it's also vibrating that air. That air is in turn thrown out of the sound hole, and we hear that. So the sound that would otherwise be running away from us, it's kind of, imagine it's being turned back on itself and thrown out of this hole. That entire system is incredibly efficient but it's not an amplifier and it's not resonating. It's just forced vibration. We make the guitar vibrate and then it cooperates and makes sound. So why am I talking about guitars at all if this is a video on resonance? Well, the guitar does resonate. It does have a resonating frequency. Everything in the universe has a resonating frequency. You do. This table does, The mouse, my, my mouse does. If I drop a key on the floor, the sound that it makes is its resonating frequency. If you blow over the top of a bottle, the air in the bottle has a resonating frequency. Just as a matter of interest, a really quick aside, the reason why you hear, if you blow over the top of um, a beer bottle um, and, and you get the, the low booming sound, the reason why you're hearing that sound is that your air, the air coming out of your mouth is white noise if you press a white noise generator on a synthesizer that's what it's going to sound like white noise contains all frequencies the air in the bottle has depending on what its volume is a specific resonant frequency if it receives a frequency an energy source of the same frequency it will resonate with that energy source well if white noise is all of the frequencies the air in the bottle actually picks out the single frequency it's interested in, throws all of the others away, says don't care about any of these, I only care about that one, absolutely love it, and they, they interact. You begin to resonate with the air in the bottle. You make the air vibrate by applying a tiny little bit of energy, just like the tiny little push on the swing, the bottle will carry on selecting the frequency it wants. The guitar can do that as well the guitar has a resonating frequency. Well, more specific, well, it, that, that, that's true, but more specifically, the air inside the body of the guitar has a resonating frequency, and I can demonstrate it to you. Okay, here is my beloved Faith Plug Moon guitar. I highly recommend acquiring one. 
what an instrument this is. Anyway, a piece of cardboard and a plucked E string. That wasn't very dramatic. What I'm proving here is that the sound hole has an impact on the sound, but not as much as you'd think. The sound still escapes through the cardboard. It gets a little bit louder, the tone gets a little bit richer. But really, it's quite surprisingly little effect that you have by putting a piece of cardboard over the sound hole. For all the top three strings that's true. The D string, that just got a little bit louder. Kind of noticeably, in true spoiler alert fashion, I'm going to jump over the A. Again, a little bit louder, pluck it again. You hear a little bit of a whum and it gets a little bit louder. Now let's do the A string. Significantly louder. And significantly whummier. This guitar has a resonant frequency of approximately 100 hertz, which is reasonably close to low A. The air inside the body has a resonant frequency of 100 hertz. When the 100 hertz string vibrates, it interacts with the air inside the body. By placing the cardboard over the top, I'm interfering with that resonance. There's basically like an elastic thing going on inside where the air is forcing out so rapidly, so powerfully, that it generates a little bit of a vacuum and then it pulls the air back in and then it carries on. That's how the resonance manifests and the cardboard interferes with that process. So we still hear the tone, but we don't hear the resonance. There isn't resonance on these higher strings and so there's almost no difference between the two. That's called Helmholtz resonance. Any system that contains air any container that contains air has a Helmholtz resonance, a specific frequency at which the air inside that object wants to resonate. The air in the bottle that you blow over has a Helmholtz resonance. When an external system provides energy at the correct frequency, an oscillation at the correct frequency, the air inside the bottle interacts with it, it resonates, and you hear the sound. The air inside the guitar body resonates at its Helmholtz resonance frequency and you hear this deep booming 100-ish hertz sound. The acoustic guitar is specifically designed with a Helmholtz resonance in the lower register, typically around low A, and it helps boost those low strings. It provides an additional warmth and depth to the sound that wouldn't be there if you didn't have that resonance effect. Every musical instrument that has any interaction with air has a Helmholtz resonance, a flute, a violin. It doesn't matter what shape the instrument is. If it's got a chamber that contains air, then it will have a specific frequency at which the air inside that chamber will resonate and you'll hear it. There's a second respect in which a guitar is really useful to us for the purpose of explaining what resonance is. And it's the interaction between the strings of the guitar. And for this we'll go back to the demonstration mode and I'll show you how one string can interact, can resonate with another string, inducing forced vibration at the resonant frequency. Let's go and have a look at that. Okay, so we're going to make one string resonate with another. I'm going to use A as the resonant note and I'm going to do it with harmonics. This harmonic here is a note two octaves higher than low A. 
So there's low A, there's uh, an octave above, and there's two octaves above. That note is the same as that harmonic there. There's another A harmonic on the A string itself there. That's exactly a quarter of the length of the A string from the 5th fret to the 12th fret is an equal jump and then there's another point up here which is the third jump and then we finally get to the bridge. So when I pluck that harmonic I'm generating a note two octaves above the fundamental. There's one octave above, there's two octaves above. So these two notes are the same. I'm going to pluck the 7th fret harmonic on the D string and keep E, B, G and low E all damped. So these are the only two strings that are going to be allowed to sound. I'm going to pluck this string and then immediately damp it. Hear that? That's the A string vibrating. Do it again. Just the A string ringing. Damp the A string, sound stops. When I pluck this harmonic, it's resonating with the string below. It's generating a frequency that the string below likes. Now just have a think about that for a moment. The frequency that's being generated there is two octaves above this low A. The low A is all the way down there. But the A string is vibrating. It's vibrating two octaves above where it wants to be. It's as if I plucked that harmonic. So when I strike the seventh fret D string harmonic, it is making the A string vibrate, but not using either its fundamental frequency or its first harmonic frequency. The first vibration that we get is the second octave harmonic. So if you remember from the, the harmonic series, you start off at 110 hertz, which is your A. Then you go an octave up and you get to 220 hertz, which is A, an octave higher. Then you get to 330 hertz, which is the perfect fifth above this A. Then you get to 440 hertz, which is the second octave A. That note there is the same as that one. So the resonance that's being induced between these two strings, that's occurring between these two strings, is at the frequency of the initial vibrating string. It's forcing a vibration in the A string at the same frequency, and because that's a harmonic of the string, it picks it up and says, thanks very much, I'll, pick, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that. If I pluck the D, D string seventh harmonic and then immediately damp the D and A strings we should hear nothing because none of the other strings resonate at that frequency there's no other there's no other sound to be had none of the other strings are interested in that frequency only the A string so anytime you encounter the term resonance you're dealing with two systems that are interacting harmoniously now that might not be a harmonious interaction that you're particularly excited about. You don't want microphone squeal, which is an example of resonance. Guitar feedback is an example of resonance. Anything where you hear a sudden extreme volume at a particular pitch, because two things are interacting with each other, the air in the bottle has a, an extreme pitch because it's being interacted with by your breath. You, you've probably seen the video footage of the um, Tacoma Narrows bridge collapse. That was an example of resonance being caused by the atmosphere, by wind. A great example of um, resonance in the real world was a, a bridge called the Millennium Bridge in London. Uh, the, the, the engineers designed perfectly to avoid resonance from the wind. It's, it was designed structurally correctly. What they didn't anticipate is that the footsteps of people walking on the bridge would cause the bridge to sway. And by generating just randomly, the, uh, a, a tiny sway would begin. And then people would lean into the sway in order to not fall off the bridge. And the sway would accentuate. And the more people that were on the bridge, the more it resonated. 
that so everybody basically walked in step on the bridge and that energy generated a resonance at a frequency that the engineers hadn't anticipated and the bridge wobbled so any two systems that interact with each other at the same frequency will resonate potentially in completely unanticipated and unexpected ways so you need to be aware that these phenomena can occur and then you've got the ability to uh, to bend them to your will if you know that your guitar has a particular resonant frequency then you can use that information constructively rather than being ignorant of it so that's the concept of resonance in nature in the next video we'll talk about resonance in electronics and why analog synthesizers have a resonance knob hope you found this video useful if you did please consider subscribing and hit notifications and then you'll find out when uh, part two comes out hope to see you then thanks very much for watching